I recently came across a video on Facebook featuring a prominent Islamic scholar, likely a sheikh or imam. The video presented a series of interesting questions and I felt compelled to engage with them. Here are the questions he raised. Listen to me carefully. I'll just be short and precise. If you answer me correctly, maybe I can join in church. One, I don't want stories. Without the cross, without Jesus being on the cross, there is no Christianity. My question comes here. Did God, or did God's plan, or did God, God's plan for Jesus to die on the cross? Number one. Number two, did Jesus himself wanted to die on the cross? Number three, why did they want to kill him? Is it because of your sins? Or is it because of political issues? If you have the answer, don't give me stories. I would like to take the questions one after the other just as you have requested. As a Christian, I can confidently say that yes, Jesus' death on the cross was absolutely part of God's plan. This belief is central to Christian theology and is woven throughout the scriptures. Here's a breakdown of the key points. The Bible establishes that humanity is separated from God by sin. Romans 3.23 Animal sacrifices were offered in the Old Testament to atone for sins, but these were temporary solutions. Hebrews 9.13-14 Jesus, being fully God and fully man, became the perfect sacrifice taking the penalty for our sins upon himself. 1 John 2, 2. The concept of a suffering Messiah was foreshadowed in the Hebrew Bible. Isaiah 53 speaks of a righteous servant who would bear the sins of many. Isaiah 53, 5 to 6. Passages like Psalm 22 describe the physical suffering of the coming sacrifice, reflecting the events of the crucifixion, fulfilling scripture. The New Testament Gospels portray Jesus himself acknowledging the necessity of his death. He speaks of it as fulfilling the scriptures, Matthew 26, 54, referring to these prophetic passages. The crucifixion exemplifies God's perfect balance of love and justice. God's love for humanity compels him to offer a path to reconciliation, while his justice demands a penalty for sin. Jesus' as sacrifice satisfies both by offering forgiveness through his death. The crucifixion wasn't simply about punishment, but about offering humanity redemption and a restored relationship with God. Number two, did Jesus himself wanted to die on the cross? In Luke chapter 24, verses 44 to 46, this is what he says here. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me, this is what Jesus is saying, everything written about me in the law of Moses, in the prophets, and in the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, thus it is written that the Christ, the Messiah, should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. So the prophets, the Psalms, the Torah, the law of Moses, and the gospel, Jesus himself, all of them say the same thing, that the Messiah would suffer for our sake, die for our sins, for our sake, and then also live again. Jesus' desire to die on the cross is portrayed as an expression of his obedience to God's will rather than a personal desire for death. On one hand, he expresses a natural human trepidation towards suffering. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he prays, My Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Matthew 26, 39. Yet, he ultimately submits to God's will, saying, Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Matthew 26, 39. 
This suggests Jesus understood the necessity of his death while also experiencing the emotional weight of the sacrifice. Finally, the scholar inquired as to the motivations behind Jesus' persecution, specifically whether his sins were the cause. Number three, why did they want to kill him? Is it because of your sins or is it because of political issues? Reasons for killing Jesus. Jesus' teachings and actions challenged the religious authorities of his time. Mark 2, 23 to 28. He questioned their interpretations of scripture and spoke of a coming kingdom of God that transcended their earthly power structures, often in metaphorical terms. This, along with his claims of being the Messiah, threatened their authority and position. John 11:48. Additionally, some political leaders saw Jesus as a potential source of unrest. It's important to understand that Jesus was sinless. He wasn't condemned for his own wrongdoings. The accusations against him were politically motivated and fueled by a desire to silence him. 700 years before Jesus is born, prophet Isaiah speaks of the Messiah, about how he will be pierced for our sins, carry our sorrows, and how the Lord will put all of our sins upon him and by his wounds will be healed. Let's go to the Zabur, the Psalms, because the Quran says that the Psalms is from God, right? So this is Psalm 22. It says, I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a post herd and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs encompass me. A company of evildoers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them and for my, my clothing, they cast lots. So we have Isaiah, prophet Isaiah, speaking of Jesus, talking about him being pierced, him dying for our sins and things of this nature. And you also have prophet David, Dawood, in the Zabur, in the Psalms, prophesying about the Messiah, saying that he will be pierced having his hands and his feet pierced, being surrounded by his enemies, mocked and ridiculed. That's two. Let me show you another one. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. I'm doing this for a reason. I'm giving you these different prophets for a reason. Watch. So this is God speaking. He says this. And I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and pleas for mercy, so that when they look on me, on him whom they have pierced, they shall mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and weep bitterly over him as one weeps over a firstborn. Now we've been seeing a theme here. Who, according to all the scriptures that we've been seeing, is the one that's pierced? Jesus. So it's Jesus who they pierced. And when they finally see him, that day when he comes, they will see him, the one whom they pierced, and they will cry, they will feel guilty, they will feel remorseful because they're realizing what they've done. But it's gonna to be too late. Jesus' message challenged the status quo, leading to his persecution and death. Here's my final thought. Whether you believe in Jesus as the Son of God or not, keep an open mind and heart as you explore these profound questions and may you find wisdom, peace, and truth on your journey. God bless you. If you found this discussion valuable, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more thought-provoking content.